Welcome back to the channel, my name is Coach Ben. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel where it's all about all things football related. Today's topic is five things you should look for if you're looking to find a personal trainer. So as I said in the intro, these are five things that I think you should look for in a personal trainer. Now I've ranked them from the most important to the least important in my opinion. Again, this is all subjective. Um, everyone's opinion and what they're looking for is gonna be entirely different. So keep in mind that this is just what I think the most important one is down to the least important. And you can uh, you can go off that if it helps you, fantastic. If it disagrees with you, drop a comment down below and tell me why and I would love to have a, a conversation of what you think the most important characteristic is or a trait for a personal trainer. So to get started, number one, personality. I think this is the most important because, especially if it's for your kid um, and you say your kid is like, I would say less than 12 or 13 where you're getting a personal trainer for them. I think personality is the biggest factor because how the trainer clicks with your kid and what he can get out of him in terms of the sport, I think is so much more important than anything else. Because if a coach has a good personality, you like the coach, your kid likes the coach, they have good rapport. I think that, I think your training sessions are gonna be fantastic and your kid is gonna be willing to open up and learn more and, and be a little more creative and, and adventurous. Um, but it can kind of have its downside because there's some coaches whose personalities are gonna to be too big, their ego is gonna to be too big where they think that I'm the boss of the world kind of thing and I'm gonna make your kid an elite player. I would stay away from those kind of coaches because unless they're working for like, I don't know, Barcelona or they worked at Barcelona and they have the credentials to back it up. The reality is that they're just going to be personal trainers for your kid. They're going to make your they're going to try and make your kid a better player. They're going to try to make sure that they can build off of a good foundation. But no one can really get your kid to an elite level unless that coach is already at or coaching currently at an elite level where they have those connections. No one is going to produce Ronaldo. No one is going to produce Messi. That's like no one can do that single handedly. That is, those players are, were built around their environment and they were built from their environment. Keep that in mind. I think the personality and having a good relationship with your coach or your personal trainer and them having a good personality, I think is so much more important than anything else. Number two, knowledge. Um, knowledge and experience kind of go hand in hand. The difference is, the knowledge they have of the game versus the experience of actually playing the game. There's some coaches out there who they may have played the game in high school or they may have played the game just a little bit in college and then there's players, coaches that have played at the highest level possible. It's not a, it's not a deal breaker to have a coach that maybe didn't play at the highest level but they have a good knowledge and, and, and good experience then they can help you benefit from that versus someone who's played at the highest level may not have a very good knowledge of how to work with a kid, for example. They may not have good experience, so they may not be able to translate that experience and the, what they have to your kid. So there's gonna be a good mixture between knowledge and experience and where they meet in the middle and how they can translate that and transfer that to your kid. That's um, another big one, I think, because someone who's just too knowledgeable, you're gonna probably lose your kid because they're not gonna have a good connection versus someone who's way too experienced and doesn't know how to connect with a the kid. They're gonna be trying to teach them the most complex things when maybe your kid just needs the foundations or maybe your kid just needs to learn how to pass or kick the ball. So there's a, good, there's a fine line and uh, I think over time, it'll, you'll find the middle ground and I think, that'll, I think that's a, it'll work out. Number three, structure. And what I mean by structure is how do they structure the training session? I think it's important, at least from my opinion, to have a natural progression, whether it's within one only one training session or a natural progression over several training sessions. So having a natural progression, I think you'll be able to see the, the development 
if you're a parent, you'll be able to see the development of your child from point A to point B. But if you're a coach, it gives you an outline of how to do it. So for a parent, if I'm looking for something for my daughter, for example, I want to see how they're going to progress. Okay, so if they're going to go from just one training session where it's all over the place and they're working on so many different things and there's no real like structure to it to have an end goal, I'm going to be skeptical and saying, well, does this guy have an end goal? Does this guy, does this guy know how to progress a child in terms of development? Now, <clears throat> I don't think this is a deal breaker either because there could be some sessions where you're just working on repetitive action. So you're just working on shooting, 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 shooting. It may not seem like there's a big progression and a big growth in the end, but the more reps you get, the better you're going to get in terms of whatever aspect of the game you're working in. So if you're, if you, so for example, if you just want to work on shooting, there's hundreds of drills that, and exercises you can do for shooting, but every session is going to involve shooting. So it may seem very repetitive if you're a parent because you're thinking, man, my kid's just kicking a ball into a net. Is he really learning? But for your kid, he wants to focus specifically on shooting. So there's that, that fine line of understanding your own parent looking down and saying, is my kid growing or learning versus your kid actually benefiting from just having more and more reps. Now, if it's a long-term growth and you're doing multiple sessions with a private coach, I think it's a good idea to find out what each play, what each session is and then go over like the end goal, right? So when I do private sessions and I know that I'm going to be working with a specific kid for a, a you know, say four sessions, I like to show the parent at the beginning of every session what we're going over along with the kid because I think that builds a great connection because then that parent kind of knows what to look for in their training session. So when they're watching it, they can kind of understand, okay, they're working on this specific thing here and I, I kind of understand that because we went over it. But it also shows the growth. And what I like to do as well is I like to explain how this is going to benefit your kid in a game. So you know, position specific or movement specific, you know, something I'm going to show the benefits of how they're going to use this in the future in the game. And then we're going to work on that. Um, again, I don't think it's a deal breaker. It can be the same session. You can use it over and over again. But if that's all the private trainer is doing, I don't think it's going to work for you. I think you need to have some kind of progression. I think it needs to be switched up. You need to build off of what you learned previously. Um, if you don't feel like the, the coach is growing or developing your child, you can have an open and honest conversation. That's what coaches want. They want to be open and transparent with you unless you pick the shady coach. Um, but if a, if a parent comes to me and asks me questions, hey, I, you know, I'm curious about what's the next step for my kid. We, you know, those are things that you want to go over because you want to be, you want everyone to be on the same page. There's nothing wrong with that. Number four, price. This is an iffy area because I've seen some, some private coaches charge a ridiculous amount for an hour. Honestly, the truth of the matter is your kid just needs you as a parent to go out with them to the field. Okay. You need some cones, you need a ball and maybe a goal or even a wall. Those four things right there, your kid can have a great session with you as a parent just watching some YouTube channels, YouTube videos. You're, when you pay for a private trainer, you're paying for that person's expertise, that person's knowledge, that person's relationship building. The sad thing is a coach who charges $200 versus a coach who charges $50, I know it's tempting to say if he charges more, it's gonna be better, that's not always the case. I think it's important to go through all of these other factors like personalities, the structure, the coach's knowledge, the relationship that you have and how you feel with that coach and how your kid feels with that coach. I think those are so much more important than the price because you can charge $200 and your kid could have a very terrible personal trainer, Very, they could be terrible sessions and then you could pay like 50 bucks and your kid could have a great session with a very minimalistic approach to it maybe a couple cones a goal and your kids doing more and more reps because in the end at the end of the day the number one thing is your kid is enjoying practicing your kid is enjoying getting better 
your kid is enjoying the one-on-one -on -one with the coach, your kid is enjoying the sport. If your kid isn't enjoying the sport, something's wrong. And I don't know if it's you, the parent, if it's you, the kid, or if it's the coach. Your kid has to enjoy the sport or they're gonna burn out very quickly because the older they get, the more competitive it gets. So when it comes to price, I would look at all prices spectrum and see, compare like the $20 coach, the $50 coach, the $75 coach, 100, 150, 200, you know, like look at all the options that you have and don't just assume that this coach has $200 price, has a certain license versus $50, no license, but they seem, the 51 seems like a better person, has a better relationship, has better reviews versus the 200. So those are things to look into when it comes to price is that I don't think the price is Again, the price shouldn't be a deal breaker. It, sh the pr it should not come down to the price. It should be something you're comfortable paying for. It should be something that will not hurt you financially as a parent because in the end, again, your kid just needs you as a parent in reality to get better, okay? Number five, licenses. A good coach and a good private trainer doesn't necessarily have to have the highest or a license to be honest okay you can have an ex-professional player who never got a license charges fifty dollars is a great relationship one-on-one -on -one person never got a license because he didn't feel like he needed to but he has great knowledge he has great experience and you like him so licenses shouldn't be a deal breaker if you feel like all the other factors and checklists on that you're looking for are met don't let certain things hold you back Okay, some qualified coaches, believe it or not, are the worst coaches. Some non-qualified coaches are the best coaches. You just need to look at what your relationship is with that person, how you feel, does your child like him, do you like what they're doing, do you like the services that they're providing. At the end of the day, it's down to you and your kid. So you and your kid need to make a decision together to say, mom and dad, this is the coach that I want, this is the coach that I like, and a great tip, is after you've had a private training session, right? Ask your kid, do you like the coach? Was it was it what you were looking for? Do you want to train again? If they say yes, this this coach is good, trust the kid because the kid is the one that's doing the exercise. The kid is one that's talking with the coach during the same training session. You're watching, you're just observing, you don't know how your kid is feeling. Let the kid take control. If the kid likes it, he's gonna tell you he likes it. If the kid hates it, He's gonna tell you he hates it. If the kid says he's bored after this session or it wasn't enough, he'll tell you that. I think it's just important to be honest with your kid and then you guys make an agreement together. Those are my five tips when it comes to looking for a private trainer. I hope it helped. I hope it helps you parents make a little bit better of a decision or makes gives you guys a better idea when it comes when you're looking for private trainers. And I have to self-promote here for a second. Um, if you guys are in the Southern California area, the Irvine, Lake Forest, Tustin, Southern OC, hit me up. I do do private trainings. You can send me an email if you're interested or you can check out my profile on CoachUp, which I'll leave the description, uh, the link in the description below. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Those are just some of the tips that I, uh, that I thought about when I do private training session and what I would look for if my daughter ever wanted a private trainer besides me. Those are kind of what I would go through. Um, and those are not really, uh, those are some things that I hope you guys think about. So go hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.